In the world of energy, the Holy Grail is a power source that's inexpensive and clean with no emissions. Well over a hundred startups in Silicon Valley are working on it. One of them is Bloom Energy. Their invention? A little power plant in a box they want to put literally in your backyard. You'll generate your own electricity with the box and it'll be wireless. The idea is to one day replace the big power plants and transmission line grid the way the laptop moved in on the desktop and cell phones supplanted landlines. It has a lot of smart people believing and buzzing, even though the company has been unusually secretive until this past February, when K.R. Schreeder invited us to be the first news organization to take a look at the innards of the bloom box that he'd been toiling on for nearly a decade. What could this power? This could power a U.S. home. Average United entire States house? house. Entire house, 24-7, 365. Something yeah. that small? The way we make it is yeah. in two blocks. This is a European home. The two put together is a U.S. home. Because <laughs> we use twice as much energy? Yeah, is that what and this will power four Asian homes. So four homes in India, your Absolutely. native country. Four to six homes in our country. It sounds awfully dazzling. It is real. It works. He says he knows it works because he originally invented a similar device for NASA. He really is a rocket scientist. This invention working on Mars would have allowed the NASA administrator to pick up a phone and say, Mr. President, we know how to produce oxygen on Mars. So this was going to produce oxygen so people could actually live on Mars? Absolutely. When NASA scrapped that Mars mission, KR had an idea. He reversed his Mars machine, so instead of making oxygen, he pumped oxygen in. He invented a new kind of fuel cell, which is like a very skinny battery that always runs. KR feeds oxygen to it on one side and fuel on the other. The two combine within the cell to create a chemical reaction that produces electricity. No need for burning or combustion. No need for power lines from an outside source. In October 2001, he managed to get a meeting with John Doerr from the big Silicon Valley venture capital firm, Kleiner Perkins. How much do you think I need to come up with the next big thing? Oh, that's my job, to find entrepreneurs who are going to change the world and then help them. John Doerr has certainly changed our world. He's the one who discovered and funded Netscape, Amazon, and Google. When he listened to KR, the idea seemed just as transformative. Efficient, inexpensive, clean energy out of a box. But Google, mm. 25 million. Mm -hmm. This man said how much money? At, at the time, he said over $100 million. Didn't smoke start coming out of your ears? And No? No. That uh, was okay? That was okay. So nothing he said scared you? Oh, I wasn't at all sure it could be done. But there was a selling point. Clean energy was an emerging market worth gazillions. I like to say that the new energy technologies could be the largest economic opportunity of the 21st century. Was this your very first clean, clean energy investment? Yeah. This was the very first. Many followed, and the clean tech revolution in Silicon Valley was off and running with startups that produce thin, flexible solar panels harness wind with giant balloons, or develop new fuels from algae. But Bloom is among the most expensive. I heard actually so far, not just from Kleiner Perkins, but total $400 million. You're in the ballpark. With that kind of money comes a lot of buzz. In Silicon Valley, every time a company raises over $100 million and they haven't come out with their product yet, everybody starts getting the heebie-jeebies. Michael Canellis is the editor-in-chief of the website Green Tech Media. You're very skeptical. I can see this, obviously. I'm skeptical, I'm hopeful, but I'm skeptical because people have tried fuel cells for, you know, since the 1830s. Yeah. And they're great ideas, right? You know, just, you know, producing energy at an instant. But they're not easy. They're like the divas of industrial equipment. You have to put platinum inside there. You've got to put zirconium. The little plates inside have to work not just for an hour or a day. But they have to work for 30 years, nonstop, and then the box has to be cheap to make. One thing stoking his skepticism, KR's been hyper-secretive. No sign on his building, a cryptic website, 
and no public progress reports. Given the stealthiness, we were surprised when K.R. showed us for the very first time how he makes the secret sauce of his fuel cell on the cheap. Actually, I feel like I'm on a cooking show. You're Martha Stewart. Absolutely. So <laughs> let's take that cooking analogy. Okay. Start with the flour. The flour. Okay. What is Th that? That is beach sand. It's beach sand? That ocean beaches in multiple continents has this material in abundance. He said he bakes the sand and cuts it into little squares. Okay, so this is beach sand turned magically into, that. into a ceramic. Yeah, into a ceramic. And then he coats it with green and black inks that he developed. Okay, is it a secret formula? There is a secret formula. Okay. And, and you take that mm -hmm. and you apply that, you paint that on either side of this white ceramic to get a green layer and a black layer. And that's it? That's it. That's the So secret. what I'm holding in my hand is a fuel cell. This is the fuel cell? This, this skinny, is a fuel skinny, cell. skinny, skinny, skinny. And this the will beauty of generate this is, power. This will generate power. One disc powers one light bulb. The taller the stack of discs, the more power it generates. In between each disc, there's a metal plate. But instead of platinum, KR uses a cheap metal alloy. The stacks are the heart of the bloom box. Put 64 of them together, and you get something big enough to power, say, a Starbucks. So this is it? KR offered to give me a sneak peek inside the bloom box. Nobody has seen this before. Are you going to let me look inside? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, Why not? This is, uh, so, go ahead. here we go. Okay. Oh. All those modules that we saw go into this big box. Fuel goes in, air goes in, out comes electricity. Is the bloom box intended to get rid of the grid? The bloom box is intended to replace the grid replace for the its grid. customers. It's cheaper than the grid, it's cleaner than the grid. Now, won't the utility companies see this as a threat and try to crush bloom? No, I think the utility companies will see this as a solution. All they need to do is buy bloom boxes, put them in the substation or the neighborhood, and sell that electricity. And They'll operate. buy these boxes? They buy nuclear power plants. They buy gas turbines from General Electric. To make power, you still need fuel. Many past fuel cells failed because they needed expensive pure hydrogen, not this box. Our system can use fossil fuels, like natural gas. Mm -hmm. Our system can use renewable fuels like landfill gas, biogas. Solar? We can use solar. You know, it's very difficult for us to come in here and make an evaluation. How are we supposed to know whether what you're saying is true? Why don't we talk to our first customers? Yes, he already has customers. Over 20 large, well-known companies have quietly bought and are testing bloom boxes in California. Like FedEx, we were at their hub in Oakland the day Bloom installed their boxes, each one costing seven hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars. One reason the companies have signed up is that in California, twenty percent of the cost is subsidized by the state, and there's a thirty percent federal tax break because it's a green technology. In other words, the price is cut in half. We have FedEx, we have Walmart. Yeah, yes. Walmart. Absolutely. Staples? Staples. So who was the first? Google was the very first. Google company. was the first? Yes. These four units have been powering a Google data center for two years. They use natural gas, but half as much as would be required for a traditional power plant. KR told us that three weeks in at Google, suddenly one of the boxes just stopped. Your heart just drops. Did you panic? For a short while? Yes. He fixed that, then there was another incident. The air filters clog up and air is not coming into the system because the highway is kicking dirt. You just flip the system around and the problem is gone. Another company that's bought and is testing the bloom box so KR can work out the kinks is eBay. Its boxes are on the lawn in the middle of its campus in San Jose. These things fuel almost 15% of the power on this campus. John Donahoe, the CEO of eBay, says its five boxes were installed over a year ago 
and have already saved the company $200,000 in electricity costs. It's been very successful thus far. They've done what they said they would do. eBay's boxes run on biogas made from landfill waste, so they're carbon neutral. Donahoe took us up to the roof to show off the company's more than 3,000 solar panels. But they generate a lot less electricity than the boxes on the lawn. So this on five buildings, acres and acres and acres. Yes, the footprint for Bloom is, is much more efficient. When you average it over seven days a week, 24 hours a day, the Bloom box puts out five times as much power that we can actually use. But not everyone is convinced that even if the technology works, Bloom, that now makes one box a day, will ever be able to be as big as its backers say. Going from a few to mass manufacturing is going to be tough. And then making them so people won't run away at the price tag. You know, it needs to be cheaper than solar. It needs to be cheaper than wind. What if he can get the price way down? He claims he can. And if he, if he can, the problem is then GE and Siemens and other conglomerates probably can do the same thing. I mean, they have fuel cell patents. They have research teams that have looked at this. What do you think the chances are? that in 10 plus years, you and I will each have a bloom box in our basements? 20%. Hmm. But it's going to say GE. Companies that you have bet on, yes. they haven't all succeeded. Right. I have some famous failures. You have some very famous failures. Yes. This is perhaps the most famous one of all. Dor is praying that bloom is not the next segue. In five to 10 years, we would like to be in every home. How much do you think it's going to cost the average person to have one, to buy one? A unit should cost less than $3,000. You are an idealist. You know, it's about seeing the world as what it can be and not what it is. I see you seeing a bloom box in the basement of the White House. Absolutely. I would love that to go on the lawn. So forget equipment. the basement. You want the bloom box in the rose garden. <laughs> Maybe next to that organic vegetable garden. I would be happy with that. Since our report aired in February, the company told us they've received over 100 new orders, including ones from PG&E, California's large power company.